Time for something different. Usually I focus on individual spells, but today I'll be going over 10 of the best second level spells. Let me know what you think in the comments. Welcome to Pack Tactics, where we can count to 10. Number 10, Levitate. The reason this spell is good is because it's very debilitating for enemies. It can completely take care of a melee opponent as they'll be stuck in the air without any counterplay. But it can also be very strong against ranged enemies as well. Well, as you and your team can use cover or range to reduce their effectiveness. What do I mean by range? Well, the enemy might have 60 foot range, but your team has light crossbows, which is 80 to 320 range. If the enemy can't range you, but you can range them, then you're default killing them. This is not a repeat save either if they fail to save. They're gonna be stuck there for a long time. 10 minutes is a long time. Interestingly enough, enemies that can normally fly, rules as written, cannot move by flying if they are affected by levitate. The main reason why this is not higher up is because it requires the target to fail a constitution saving throw, and it only works on single targets. Number 9! Tash's Mind Whip! This spell on a failed intelligence save makes a target take some damage and is unable to take a reaction until the end of their next turn. Additionally, on their next turn, they can only take an action, bonus action, or move. On a failed save, they take half damage. This is actually pretty comparable to levitate, at least when you use it optimally. Again, it's best used against melee opponents, specifically when you and your allies are outside of their reach, or you can move away away from their reach before their turn. That way, you make the enemy unable to attack your party if they fail the save, because they either move or use an action, not both. This is a bit higher than levitate, even though it only lasts a turn, because enemies usually have a lower chance to succeed on an intelligence saving throw than a constitution saving throw. Also, it does damage and you can upcast it to target multiple creatures. Number Find Steed! Horses are really useful. Their movement allows you to dash across the map, it can disengage for you without using your action, and they can also carry your stuff or be used as cover. This horse is special though because you could just get it back after it dies. And it also has some niche uses in that you can basically twin spells with your steed. Finally, I really like how effective this spell is because you can cast it one day and you'll have it the next day and the day after that. If you have downtime, it basically allows you to cast this spell for free, so it's very cheap. Tabletop builds me an article with more information about this spell and its cousin, Find Greater Steed, which you can check out in the comments. It even talks about mounted combat rules. Before we continue, there's a very important announcement. Only Crits are having a Black Friday sale and a Cyber Monday sale on the 25th to 28th of November. Mark your calendars and keep an eye out on their website for great deals. This site is brilliant for both players and DMs because when you buy a set of dice, you also get a 5e adventure for free. A lot of these are one shots, so they should be easy to translate to other systems as well, such as Pathfinder. You have almost a hundred different sets of dice to pick from too. It's a wide selection. Together with OnlyCrits, we're doing a giveaway on Twitter. Follow the both of us. Retweet and comment your favorite dice set and get a chance to win a free set of dice. The winner will be drawn on the 26th and announced in my video on the 27th. That's right, you can be in a Pack Tactics video. If you can't wait till the 25th, you can still get some dice by pressing the link in the comments. And use my coupon code Pack Tactics for a 12% discount. Back to the video. Next up, number 7. Locate objects. What? This one might be a little bit confusing for some of you. Kobold, it's situational, and it doesn't even do damage! But this spell is pretty crazy if you think about it. You can either find a specific object or the nearest object of a particular kind. The latter choice opens up a lot of options. A magic item can be a kind of object, as it is a subtype of objects overall. Then there are other cool options. 
options like spell books or something funny like lead containers. As you know, you cannot locate things in lead containers, but lead containers are free real estate. You can locate them in particular. Again, Tabletop Builds has an awesome article on this spell as well. Make sure to check it out in the comment section. Ech, number six, Rhymes Binding Ice. Good spell! This comes from Fizzbands. It's an AoE cone effect with a 30 foot range. If the creature fails a con save, it takes damage and is hindered by ice for one minute, reducing the creature's speed to zero. It then has to take an action to break free. If it succeeds on the save, the creature takes half damage. This is an excellent control spell. With teamwork, if you combine this with a casting of web, you can completely ruin the enemy's day, as they need to take multiple actions actions to even move. That's multiple rounds. They're going to be stuck there for a long time. It's a bit unfortunate that Binding Ice is a constitution saving throw spell, but it will last for quite a while before it actually becomes a bad spell. It's very good. Halfway point, number five, Phantasmal Force. This spell is amazing, but it's a bit prone to DM fiat, as it is based on illusions. The way I interpret the spell is that without outside help, a target will always believe the illusion they are under is real. Because they rationalize anything that may make it seem out of place. Therefore, they will only try to see through the illusion when someone points out that it's fake. Now, some DMs have different interps. Illusions are a hot mess. But my interp is what I've experienced in majority of tables I've played in. A cool example of an illusion for this spell is an Iron Maiden. The target isn't necessarily restricted strained inside, but they wouldn't exactly try to walk out. There's a lot of questions that need to be asked when you cast an illusion spell though. Tabletop Builds made an article about what you should ask if you want to play with illusions. Number four, aid. This is a pretty simple spell. It increases the hit points and maximum hit points of its targets. It can be used to bring up multiple targets from being unconscious. You should cast it before your long rest is over and reap its benefits for eight more hours. And even the upcast is fantastic. It improves your party's sturdiness. Yay, top three time. Number three, rope trick. This is one of the best defensive spells in the game. It is basically a portable corner. Usually people bring up blur or mirror image, but those are not even close to being as strong. I'll link my rope trick guide in the description if you want to know more. Number two, Spider-Man. <laughs> yes, the Spider-Man spell. This spell creates a 20 foot cube of web. It's called web by the way. It's a massive form of control. It counts as difficult terrain and you can restrain people inside it. This is just a massive boon for any party that uses it, especially against enemies that want to approach you. Combine this with knockback effects like repelling blast or telekinetic feats and you can keep putting people back inside. The difficult terrain actually helps with that quite a bit too. I love the Spider-Man spell. Next up, number... No, Kobold! Special round time! Special round time! Okay, well, here's some spells that didn't quite make the list for different reasons. First up is Healing Spirit. This used to be one of the best out-of-combat healing spells in the game, but it got nerfed. Now it sucks. Second is Magic Mouth. Due to its open nature regarding its trigger, this spell is the most advanced spell in the entire game. There's so much theory around it, and DMs have a hard time comprehending it. You can actually create telephones out of that spell if you have enough money and time. I'm probably never going to cover Magic Mouth ever because it's too crazy. Third is a movable object. Combine it with a tiny spool of black thread that never runs out from the haunted one background, you'll have a lot of fun. Fourth, spike growth. It almost made number 10, but I wanted to talk about levitate more because I haven't covered that before. It's a very team heavy 
spell. The more your friends combo with it, the better it is. I made a video about it. Check it out. Lastly is Nistel's Magic Aura. This is a cursed spell. Let's not talk about that spell. Cobalt, we're finally at the final! The best spell! Number one! Pass without trace! This spell nearly guarantees that you surprise enemies when you have the opportunity to surprise them. Surprise is like action surge, but way better because it's basically for your entire party. That means the spell only becomes more and more powerful the stronger your allies are, meaning that even at higher levels, this spell just keeps on coming. It's one of the best spells in the entire game. If you want to go really in depth with this one, one, I would recommend looking up the flagship ranger from tabletop builds, which also includes a link to a guide on stealth and surprise. Flagship ranger is my favorite build of all time, by the way. I hope you liked my top 10 list. I might do more in the future. Let me know in the comments. End of video. Remember, 25th to 28th of November, there's a big sale on dice and even adventures. Only Crits hopes to earn your purchase, as I hope to earn your subscription. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye!